This is the Voidstar and Keysight MLG Z42069, the world's first oscilloscope designed for ranked competitive electrical engineering. It's got two screens, water cooling, a Raspberry Pi 3, and Pico. Custom labels made from functioning circuit boards and almost two meters of rainbow LEDs. So why did I take a precision instrument worth a year of college and make it look like a rave in Tony Stark's basement? This adventure began like all great American tales with a word from our sponsor. Ladies, gentlemen, and cyborgs, I'm Zach Friedman and welcome to Void Star Lab. The other day I got an email from Keysight Technologies, and keep your finger off the skip button, it's part of the story, uh, they wanted me to do something with their test equipment. You see, Keysight has their own YouTube channel, and on March 15th, they're kicking off Keysight University. That's over a straight month of videos and streams about cutting edge equipment, tips from the pros, tutorials and guides, and they're giving away more than $300,000 of bench gear and other goodies to over 100 participants, so make sure you mark your calendars. Dan from Keysight, remember this face, it's important, offered to send me one of the demo units from their content studio, and of course I said yes. It's a free oscilloscope. Brooke and I are moving our operation to Colorado next week, and that makes this the very last project in our New York City workshop. This is our last hurrah, and our last chance to make the baddest, raddest project on the channel. I certainly made the most expensive. Here's what Dan sent, the Keysight MSO-X3104. This machine has like 200 times more mojo than my smooth brain can even pretend to handle on film. I realized that I had no chance of using the scope to actually make anything, so I thought, let's use the scope to make something. It's important to note that at this point, I didn't know the scope was worth five figures. Had I thought to look that up, I would have just sold it, bought all the single malt whiskeys in New York, and fled to Monaco with 175,000 dog coins. Instead, I busted out the screwdriver. First order of business, take those thick overlapping plates of aluminum electromagnetic shielding, rip them out. There's no point putting a window in the back if all you're gonna see is EM shielding. Uh, I individually wrapped all the power cables and I 3D printed some cable combs because this thing is fancy. This project was going great, I thought. This was the point where everything started to go wrong. See, my next task was to upgrade all 15 virgin rotary encoders with Chad RGB encoders. These, when combined with some custom designed, custom printed resin knobs, would make the front panel glow like a magical rainbow. I latched the front panel circuit board into my vise, I busted out my desoldering gun, and I began to suck. As I installed the encoders and soldered the wires, it slowly dawned on me that this project was about to spiral out of control. See, each encoder had three discrete LEDs. That makes 45 LEDs that I have to individually control. That means 60 wires and 45 transistors-ish. Second problem, none of the encoder lens went to ground, so I had to run 60 more wires so I could simulate each click with an optocoupler. Finally, after soldering all 120 connections, I discovered that the wires and control board now didn't fit between the circuit board and the faceplate. See, I realized I was spending far too much time on the front panel and I still had way too much work to get all to fit. As I said in my video earlier, don't do things that aren't worth finishing. Even if it means discarding a day of printing, three days of intricate soldering, $75 of backlit rotation sensors. Do it with a smile. So I grabbed my iron and I stripped off every single wire. These clear knobs were useless, so I yeeted them and I grabbed some black guitar knobs. Every single second I spent modding this board was now stripped off, thrown out, or covered up. I vented my impotent rage by dremeling a window in the back of the case. Oh, you think I should have used a bandsaw? Well, I think you should get your own YouTube channel. This opened up enough time to trick out the probe sockets with this applique that required laser cutting, 3D printing, and vinyl cutting on the Cricut. Those numbers are my own spiffy handwriting from my Discord. The label is an actual functional printed circuit board manufactured by Oshpark here in America. Mwah! Dan Bogdanoff uh, designed them. He's the gentleman who appeared in most of Keysight videos and the MC of Keysight University. Dan used this really clever workflow to design vector art in Inkscape and import it into KiCad, creating ultra crisp circuit artwork that neither program can make on its own. This is all free and open source software and the results are awesome, so I've linked that tutorial in the description. I'm glad I watched it because I thought KiCad was pronounced as KiCad and my Jewish parents watched these videos. Hi mom! Next up is the liquid cooling loop. I blasted the stock heat sinks with freeze spray, wedged a razor in there, and made a convincing argument with my favorite hammer. 
This board doesn't have any mounting holes for the water blocks, so I had to squirt some of my own thermal epoxy on there, and then, like a traditionalist from Utah, form four everlasting bonds. I've always wanted to liquid cool a Raspberry Pi, so fuck it, let's glue a fifth water block on there. I bought a foot-long reservoir and a three-inch thick radiator because when I see a number, I want that number as big as possible. I had to design and 3D print this bracket so that that fat-ass radiator could actually fit on the side of it. You'll notice that there's no fan on the radiator. This is by design. The radiator is so plump that convection alone keeps the chips from overheating. Oh, sh! It, it fucking died. Oh, shit, it must have overheated. I wish I had remembered about the power supply because that thing also needs cooling and I'm kind of racing the clock to finish recording this before this thing burns up. I found a can of hammered finished spray paint that gave the case a good old fashioned spritzing. I see you pedants typing up smarmy comments about my heavy handed spray painting. Allow me to direct your attention to the can where it clearly states to apply one or two medium coats, QED. Like hell, I'm gonna let someone else be right on the internet. Speaking of, I'm moving 2,000 miles in less than seven days, and I've been working until 3 a.m. over 15 consecutive nights, so you don't have to go a single week without the void star you crave. You would better fucking like, comment, subscribe, and join my fucking Discord. I swear to fucking God. I let the paint dry, I glued in the radiator bracket. Of course, I forgot to leave a cutout for the hinge and I carefully measured, soldered, and glued the majority of a reel of RGB dot star LEDs. These are sort of like NeoPixels, but more expensive. Dan's nameplate design was a functional LED strip in itself, so I salvaged some NeoPixels and populated it. It didn't work. I realized that the data line had shorted against ground, so I cut and jumped it. It still didn't work. Turns out that Dan had marked pin four, pin one. So I just killed all the NeoPixels and I blew out the Raspberry Pi Picos pin zero. I salvaged more NeoPixels, soldered up another nameplate, but it worked. Now's the time to glue down that window and apply some 3D printed trim to hide my terrible cutting job. I may have gotten a little distracted at this point because this is when I found out how much this thing cost. See, I was doing this project during a Fat Cat Fab Lab open house Zoom call because it was consuming my life. A fellow member asked me what I'm doing. I say I'm pimpatizing an oscilloscope, just another day at the office. He links me the oscilloscope cell sheet, and for the first time, holy B-movie script, this thing is $18,000. I've been casually whacking blinky knobs on a gizmo that cost almost as much as I paid in rent last year. Let's talk about them pies. This project uses a Raspberry Pi 3 to drive the second monitor, and because everyone and their dog wanted me to use the Pi Pico, I shelled out four entire dollars and threw one in there to handle all the LEDs. The second monitor is the official Raspberry Pi touchscreen in a 3D printed case. I designed and printed a bracket to mount the Pi to the side of the scope, and then I laser cut a second window for the Pi. Yeah, that's right, this thing has two windows, deal with it. Rotating the touchscreen turned out to be a day-long wrestling match with Raspbian's X server, so I didn't have time to actually implement anything on the Pi itself. Life sucks, wear a hat. I do want to make two things clear. First, the display is not just for show. The scope does have a USB serial out outer face. Every measurement, analysis, and setting is just an AT command away. Second, and most importantly, it plays Doom. The people wanted a Pi Pico project, and I made the mistake of listening. I spent three hours freeing up space on the Pi 3, and then two more hours apt getting the Pico's multi-gigabyte toolchain onto it. Then I discovered that I didn't even need the SDK to install MicroPython. Turns out the dot star LED library wasn't built for MicroPython. It's built for CircuitPython. It's another two hours to learn that they were different. <sighs> Friendship ended with Teensy? Hell nah, Teensy gang for life. Moral of the story is don't use new platforms when you're on a deadline, preferably never at all. Everything is built, it's time to bring it together. I completed the liquid cooling loop, I ran the power and data lines, I mounted all the modules, and I carefully eased the two halves together. The time had come for the moment of truth. I held my breath, I turned the key. Wait, I forgot to mention that I also replaced the power switch with a badass ignition key. I held my breath, I turned the key. If you're listening in the background, you might want to tab back to this video because this coolant makes water currents visible, and my new camera does 120 frames per second at 2K. Here it comes. Hey, 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, Cyborgs, is the MLG Z42069, the very first and very only pro gaming oscilloscope. It's the first liquid-cooled scope, it's the first dual monitor scope. It's the first scope of the window and rainbow lights. An $18,000 instrument, seven feet of tubing, six feet of LED strips, five water blocks, a Raspberry Pi 3, and a Pico, all working together to really not improve the oscilloscope in any way. This is a piece of test equipment fit for Voidstar Lab, the most serious hardware hacking channel on YouTube, coming soon to a Colorado near you. This ludicrous project was instigated by Keysight Technologies, the sponsor of the episode and the donor of of this unfortunate oscilloscope. Spawn it on their channel, knock subscribe, 360 no scope their bell icon, and mark your calendars because March 15th is the start of Keysight University. Thing isn't the thing. The biggest thanks of all to our beautiful yet intellectual patrons. We just hit the $1,000 goal, which is funding better projects with spicier parts, and I hope you agree that this episode it went to work. Our most glorious broad shouldered flowing locks having lab assistants are Sir Derpington of Derptopia, Robert Breeze, Brian Santero, Taranak, Sam Wampler, Olivia Yiptong, Akalia, Gregory Jones, Anthony Mincarelli, Jason, The Antifa, Varka, Tech Daddy, Rusty Flute, Daniel Cadwell, James Barry, Zanforian, Michael Dunn, Zundo, Powerful CCH, Bill Schuller, Salty, and Roger Pinkham. Liquid cooled multi core thanks to our radical collaborators, I'm Not Betacore and CMD Command. I've hidden both of their names somewhere in this episode. This scene doesn't count, you idiots. Thanks to Brooke, the lovely wife I abandoned for two weeks to put rainbow lights in a squigglometer. And of course, to our lovely Discord mods, Billy Rubin, Techniac, and My Fair Julie. MLG stands for Multi Channel Scope, Logic Analyzer, and Signal Generator. The Z is for clout. Of course, 42069 is the zip code of Melbourne, Kentucky. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on Mountain Time, but still in the future.